Well, hello everyone. General Hangerney back. Uh, welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, I uh, I haven't made a lot of videos lately, but uh, that's uh, I uh, I um, I've been having some pretty serious health troubles lately. I think uh, I've rounded the corner though. Um, I've been off work for quite a while. It, it kind of started when I was doing the play test with my friend Robert for Global War 1914, and uh, it took a while to finish that game. We were running around along pretty smoothly, and then uh, and then this hit, and um, like I could only play for you know maybe an hour a day or something. And I felt bad for Robert because uh, we were both really excited about playing the game, and it was going really good. And and then uh, then I just I just couldn't hold my head up for for very long. But uh, like I said, I think that things are going better now. Um, I think I got the, a good medicine now. Uh, it took a while though. I mean, I had a ton of tests done on me. So uh, I'm pretty sure that um, it was nothing more serious than, than what we figured. And I don't want to say too much about it. You know, it's kind of a private thing, but I think though that uh, the things are going to be okay. And hopefully I'll be back to work in another week or two and, uh, get back into the swing of life again and and uh, be able to make some more videos again, right? Um, I'm looking forward to getting back into uh, into playtesting the 1914 game. I think Robert's going to do a playtest on his own. And plus we found some other uh, people that um, down in the States there that are, are going to take a run at the game as well. Uh, a gaming group down there, there's a bunch of them. And um, they really want to check it out and and uh and they're good players they, they've been playing 36 for years and uh there's a whole group of them and they're really excited about uh about jumping in so uh uh we're looking forward to hearing the the feedback from them because this is something that we're really quite proud of um this 1914 game you know i i didn't feel that way like uh say six months ago you know when uh, when I was looking at the game and and we were going to play test it and then when we did play test it in the summertime, we had a, a, a couple of things wrong uh, that we were doing wrong. Plus, uh, it, uh, it it did have a couple of flaws in it that that kind of bogged the game down. Um, and if you were following along back then, then uh, I don't really need to explain any more than that. You you know what the, those were. But um, since we started play testing it again, like we we'd already changed a couple things and. Uh, and uh bob and i when we were as we were play testing it we were changing the rules and so if you followed along with that play test you know what i'm talking about as well like we we were changing rules midstream and and we didn't um talk too much about exactly what we were doing because uh um we're not ready to put this game out yet um we're getting close but there's uh there's at least two or three other World War One games uh, that are being developed right now, and and we wanted our game to be unique, right? Um, you know, like I I wish those other guys um, luck and uh, the best wishes uh, developing their games, but it doesn't do any of us any good to all have a, a similar game, right? Um, I mean, it was the same war, but that doesn't mean that our games can't be different and. And so uh, I don't want to see something they're doing and say, hey, you know, that'd be a good idea. Let's try that. And I, I similarly, I don't want them to look at ours and say, hey, that's a good idea. I'm, I'm going to put that in my game. Um, we want we want to develop this game independent of everybody else. And and um, and so we're going to be purposely vague. Like when we were doing our play test, uh, originally we thought about that we would do a regular style YouTube war, right? But uh, um, we decided instead just to do battle reports and, and to be kind of vague on that, like not tell you exactly how that happened, just that, you know, Germany did this this turn and Britain did that and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, and we did give some details, but um, we were purposely vague on a lot of the details. Uh, but this game is coming along very, very well. I'm really happy with it, and uh, I feel blessed that uh, that they brought me on to help out with this game. Um, it, 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 it's taken a while. Like uh, 
there's a lot of people that that uh, that do work for Doug. Um, a lot of people that have a lot of passion, but um, it, you know, like uh, too many people working on the same project, um, it's it's tough to get something done right. So with all the information and all the input that that uh, Bob had, then Doug just said, "Okay, here, this is yours. Now you go and you 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 <laughs> you write this up. Uh, you make a game out of this." And you know, they had a few meetings with the two of them in in Tulsa and. And then they brought me on to help out with some play testing and and uh, give my thoughts on it, and uh, and so really it's just the two of us working on it with of course uh, oversight from Doug, and um, I'm sure Will has something to do with it, but I don't know because um, that's uh, beyond my scope of communication. Right, I just communicate with with Bob and and with Doug. Um, but yeah, Bob has taken the lead role on this and he's the one writing the rules and and um, we're working on it together. And I really like the way it's turning out. Um, if you played 36, then you're gonna recognize this game. Uh, same type of mechanics, right? Uh, um, an infantry, still still an infantry. It, it attacks at two, defends at four, moves one. You know, all the same terrain in the game uh, that does exactly the same things to the units in the game. Um, but of course the units are going to be different, right? Because, uh, this war, the main feature of this war was, this was the first war in the modern era, you know, where, where machines were part of the war. I mean, there's always been, I mean, not always, but I mean, for, for centuries, there's been cannons and there's been gunpowder, but, uh, other than trains, which were not even that old, you know, that they, uh, they were 19th century technology. This is early 20th century technology and cars had just been invented. Hardly any people, hardly any human beings had ever flown before, right? <laughs> and so, you know, putting planes and, and, uh, and machines on the battlefield, that was, uh, that was something completely new. And um, it took some, some changing. Like when they first started out, they all lined up on the battlefield and said, charge, right? And they, away they went and then the machine guns just mowed them down, right? So they, well, let's dig a hole, you know, and next thing you know, they had a trench and then they had trench networks and then there was trench warfare and the, the whole thing got bogged down. And so this game, the mechanics are, are uh, lead to that kind of outcome as well. Like the, the, it's not as dynamic as the 1936 game, right? Like it, you just don't have the weapons. You don't have the different types of planes that, you know, that, that do uh, the battle that you can do. Like there's no planes in this game where you can shoot boats, right? Um, and there, because there wasn't, you know, like you're not gonna take a biplane out and attack a battleship with it, right? It's just not gonna turn out well for the guy in the plane. Um, at first, they were mostly just observation, right? And you know, until one guy brought a revolver with him and shot at the other guy, and and then he got a machine gun, and they, you know, like it just went from there, right? And 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 um, that's when planes became a, a weapon and not just an observation tool. But you know, like we reflect that in this game, and and uh, there's a progression of uh, the fighter technology and uh, and then developing bomber technology and zeppelins and uh um and then um the the big improvement that i've seen <clears throat> excuse me in in uh from now from the summertime was we we there was room to add units in this game but of course you know like you couldn't add uh, dive bombers because there was none right um you're not gonna add aircraft carriers because they weren't really around until 1919 and even then i mean they, they would have just been rudimentary right so uh, putting them in, in the 14 game would be kind of disingenuous, right? Um, but so what we did, uh, there was largely an infantry and an artillery war, right? We put um, infantry units in the game. So each nation has its own infantry unit, except for Russia. Russia actually has a cavalry unit. They're the Cossacks, right? And so they're kicked up cavalry. And, um, you know, and uh, Britain's got Gurkhas and uh, France has got... Um, Zouaves, they're like from North Africa. They were these wicked fighters uh, from North Africa. And uh, there's Jaggers from the Austria-Hungarian Empire and from Germany. And the Americans have US Marines. And so these would be units that are, uh, instead of two, four, 
you know, uh, attack two, defense four, there would be three, five, right? And so that adds a little bit more offense without making them overpowered because they really shouldn't be overpowered. It, it, it should be a defensive war, and it is, but not as bogged down as it was. Um, trench fighters, we've changed a little bit from what they were months ago. And uh, not much, just a little bit, right? Uh, just to make a little bit... Um, a little bit more interesting and so you know play testing is going to go on um and we're going to make sure that we've got the balance right and everything um the the civil war is, is coming along nicely uh in many ways that this is going to be an improvement over the 36 game um not because uh we're better at this than than like we we both took part in in developing the 36 game um, not the lead role, but, uh, you know, we, we both lended a hand. And so we were quite aware of how things developed and everything. And, and in this game, it's uh, because it's being put out a year, year and a half later, it's the next progression from the Global War Games. So, like, there's a card deck in there, which allows us to stretch that war out. Like, I mean, this war uh, in 1914, the Great War, was uh, was largely in Europe, right? And, and trying to make it a global game is not easy without fudging things too much. So one of the things that we are able to do with the cards is, is, is create regional conflicts. You know, like in South America, uh, the Mexican Revolution that happened, um, colonial wars down in, uh, in, in, you know, in insurrections in, in Africa and in Asia. Um, Japan is a minor power in this game. I mean, they could land on the side of the central powers or the side of uh, the allies or even an independent Japan if you have enough players to play it that way, right? Um, like if you have five players, uh, you might just decide one of, the, one of the guys wants to be Japan, right? And then, uh, then the other guys, it's two on two kind of thing until the Russians... Uh, break up uh, and go to revolution, then then that's the third faction, right? Or the fourth if you have an independent Japan. But anyway, lots of different options. And uh, but the 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 rules have progressed beyond th 1936. Um, not much. I mean, a little little bit, like uh, um, with with sea mines and and with uh, with import rules. Uh, you know, that's something that wasn't in 36, but you know might make an appearance uh down the road i don't know like some of the things that, that that we're doing in the 1914 game might make it to a version four depending on how the game plays out over the next few years right you know a version four would be years years off like four or five years from now and um but uh lots of uh uh like we had the starting point of the version three game um when we sat down here this year and we had the the outline of the 1914 game. So we're able to copy and paste uh, the best parts of the 36 game. Um, the uh, the core principles and, and uh, mechanics and then add to that as the, you know, to, to reflect the difference in the technology and the difference in the alliances and, and things like that, right? Um, we a lot of people put a lot of thought into it and, and we're fine tuning it now and and i think it's just going to be a great game uh really excited about it and then um one of the latest things that we are doing um that's in the works right now i've already seen mock-ups and stuff is uh, uh like if you watched our play test there you, you know and you, you could just well imagine that you know we had like 800 pieces on the board including the roundels right uh, at the height of, of our game there with the most on there before the Spanish flu hit, right? <laughs> and um, half of those pieces at least were in Europe. And then the other half of the pieces were on the other six feet of the board, right? <laughs> so it, it gets crowded in Europe. And uh, um, what we've done is we've uh, taken Europe and we've stretched it out. So if you do that, then the, the rest of it around it is going to have to shrink a little bit. So the map is going to look a little bit weird, but you got to remember though, we're not putting this map out so that you can take it and, and get in your wooden ship and sail off and discover America, right? <laughs> like you don't need it as a map. What you need is a game board. And if you've seen the, the map that we're playing on, it's got that blow up box in Russia 
well, that's the size that Europe is going to be, is that the size of that blow-up box. And there was plenty of room in the blow-up box. But I didn't like playing it, you know, like you're playing the game over here in Europe, but then there's the blow-up box with half of Europe over here. And um, it just, you know, it just wasn't ideal, right? Like if you had a, a 5 by 10 table, then I think you would have been okay. But um, not many of us are going to be able to fit a 5 by 10 table, let's face it. I mean, I'd love to. But anyway, um, this is what we're going to do is we're, we're going to make this map with the, with the, an enlarged Europe. So obviously Africa is going to have to squish down to the south. There's no, uh, there's no Antarctica on the 1914 map. And so you can take Africa just about right to the very bottom. Like you just need a tiny little sliver there just to put the, 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 the line to, that separates the two sea zones down there because they're, they're huge sea zones off the coast of South Africa. You just need to separate them, right? There's lots of room to put your ships down there. Um, so we'll be able to move Africa down as well. It won't have to be squished as much. Um, it, it can just be moved, right? And, you know, there's lots of room to move Russia towards Siberia, right? Um, um, you could shrink the Atlantic Ocean maybe just slightly. Like, it doesn't have to be as wide uh, that way, right? Anyway, um, it, uh, it it's not going to be like a map that maybe you've, you've seen, but we're going to try to make it the best map we can. Like, it's going to be a pretty map like the 1936 map. Uh, it's... Uh, and if it works out well, um, who knows, maybe in a few years from now, when it's time to put out a, a version 4 of 36, uh, if people like that map and they like playing on it and everything, then maybe the 36 map will look like that too, just to give you more room in Europe. Because even that game, right, uh, you get a lot of units in, in Europe, right? So anyway, 1914 is progressing along nicely. Um and lots of units available for it too. Like I was worried, say even just two months ago, three months ago, that with Axis and Allies 1914 out of print, that that uh, people would just weren't. If you didn't own that game and and more, then uh, you were going to be screwed for pieces, right? But um, but Doug's just put out a ton of pieces, and he's going to be making plastic pieces as well. But you know, like this piece here, this piece always graded my nuts here. This is the, the the artillery piece from from Axis and Allies 1914. Look at the wheels on that thing. It looks like a Flintstone car, right? Like I, I just this this was my one of my least favorite Axis and Allies pieces of all time, right? So what I got last week, and this piece here is so new uh, that um, uh, it's still tacky. <laughs> you know, like it's not wet. I'm not getting paint all over me, but it's. Uh, it's it it's uh it's like a, it's not available just yet. Um, that's the new artillery piece that Doug made. So it's a 3D print, printed piece. I'm trying to show you with it being able to, but uh, here let me just move it around a bit. So it might even be the same artillery. I'm not sure. Like it looks a lot like the other one, but it's just a much nicer sculpt, right? And it's not a it doesn't look like a Flintstone car. So um, the, those will become available probably not too long from now. Um, like in, in these, he's done tons and tons of 3D printed, not just for World War One, but for World War Two, and even a lot of modern day ones. But like he's got all the different bombers. So each nation has its own bomber, right? This would be a strategic bomber um, for the Russians. I can't remember what it's called. It's like a Sikorsky or something. I don't know. Maybe that's their fighter. Um, this is, um, an Austro-Hungarian bomber, right? And each nation has its own fighters. It's so like, here's my Japanese fighter. That's an actual Japanese fighter. Um, and then here's the French one. I don't, I don't have the names of these all, uh, memorized, but, uh, each nation has its own fighters and, uh, its own bombers. And, um, I, I'm, I don't know if, uh, the artillery will be different, but, um, but, uh, definitely the planes are different. I'm not sure what he's going to do for boats. Uh, it could be that he just does an, uh, central powers boat and, um, allies boat, or maybe they're all the same. I don't know. I don't mind using just all the same. Uh, that's the way I built my 1914 game here was, was like all the same torpedo boat destroyer, all the same cruiser all the same dreadnought. I don't mind doing that for this game. 
um, we'll, but we'll see down the road. So there's all that. But like I said, there's all kinds of other pieces too. Uh, like for instance, here, let's take a look at this. This is a couple of different uh, that he recently put on. These are um, these are Admiral class and uh, uh, Glorious class battle cruisers for the UK. Uh, so these are in the 3D printed section. Uh, really nice uh, pieces, right? And uh, he doesn't have this yet, but I was just bugging him about this today because Panzer King, every time I talk to him, has Doug put in your attack transports yet? So this is the Haskell. It's, uh, it's a, an attack transport. Uh, I, I talked to Doug again today about it, and he, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so he swears he's putting on an attack transport um, because there is none available anywhere. I don't know what people are doing it for. Uh, like, I've had mine for quite a while. Uh, he gave me a bunch of them last year, or early this year, yeah. But um, whether you're just putting a red dot on your transport or something, I don't know. Maybe you're putting a chip under it for an attack transport. Anyway, those are coming out uh, soon. He said he's going to start printing them off soon. Tons of units coming out. Uh, lots of, like, I've got all kinds of American battleships now. Um, lots of different kinds of ships. I just got a Spanish cruiser the other day. Um, new uh, coastal defense ships, uh, new new uh, seaplanes, like not just one kind of seaplane anymore. There's four or five different kinds of seaplanes now. Uh, so lots and lots of stuff coming out. And uh, another thing I just got the other day, let me just take a look here. So it's the uh, Colonial Expansion set for 36. And I've got all kinds of custom infantry that I put on there. I was going to make a video of this today, but I was finally feeling better this week. And so I went out and I got a bunch of stuff done, but lots of colonial infantry and, and new cavalry that I have and everything. And so hopefully I'll make that video tomorrow with, uh, with the, um, the, the colonial set. I really like that set though. That's my favorite style of set where you have kicked up units. Um, there's uh, something special about each one of those units, you know, like whether it's a militia or an infantry or a cavalry or an airborne uh, mountain infantry, there's an armor there. Um, but there, there's something unique about each one of them. And I like those, I like, you know, like the American minorities at war were kind of the same and the elite of the Reich and the Soviet Union and, and what else was there? There was uh, um, the elite fighter squadrons. I like those kind of sets more so than say like a manchuco set or uh you know uh those kind of sets um uh the spanish civil war set like those the, the, there's nothing wrong with those they're, they're fine it's just my preference is towards uh getting those really cool different kind of units on the board that uh that you know is is unique to any other unit on the board right and I'll, I'll find my own strategy. I don't need an expansion set necessarily to steer me in a direction. I just, just give me the cool units. <laughs> I like my army man, okay? Uh, so anyway, um, so I'm gonna hopefully get to that tomorrow. If not, then this weekend. And then after that, I'm still not feeling great. So, you know, it, it's tough for me to, to spend eight hours a day uh, trying to play a game. And so um, something that I had put on the back burner uh, to do this 14 testing was um, the 1936 rule book. And uh, uh, I have a plan for that. And this is something that I can do, like, because these videos are, are only going to be five or 10 minutes long, every one of them. Um, they're not going to be like my regular videos. I'm not going to be trying to entertain you. Uh, I'm not going to be making jokes or telling stories or going off on this tangent or giving away prizes or anything. This is going to be strictly a reference type of video. Uh, and there's going to be a whole playlist of them. Could be dozens by the time I'm done. So uh, what you'll do is like you'll you'll get your rule book and, and you'll read it. Like let's say um, the rule is 10.2. I don't know what 10.2 is, but let's say that's where the rule is. So you go there and you look at 10.2 and you think, hmm, well, I've got questions, right? Well, then you can go to the playlist where my videos will be. And uh, it'll be easy to find 10.2, like it could be 10.1 to 10.4, that video, or it could just be a video on 10.2, and it'll have the title, like um, um, whatever it is, you know, uh, Strategic Naval Movement, or whatever that 10.2 is. So you'll go to that video, and it'll be a very short video. You won't have to wade through an hour-long video looking for that particular section. 
uh, you'll just uh, you'll just get the the information that you're looking for. And then um, and also the videos will be like the series that I put out already, where uh, the nation series with the reference sheets, where the video I did not put those videos out until they were checked by Morton in Denmark. He's the guy that wrote the rules for thirty six. Um, him and I worked uh, together on that to uh, make sure that those videos were accurate. And, and these videos will all be checked by Morton before I publish them. So when I upload it to YouTube, only him and I will be able to see that video. And if he says, okay, then uh, then I publish it. And uh, if he says, no, that you got that wrong, then I'll make the video over again. It won't be that tough. It's only a five or 10 minute video, right? So, uh, and then if you have a question beyond that, if um, you went there to find an answer and it wasn't in the video either, then you can ask the question in the comment section of that video. Although I would appreciate it if you read the comments first, because if you've got a question about it, then chances are somebody else had one too. So unless you're the first person to ask that question, you know, that question might have already been asked. And so look in the comments and if you see that question and the answer, then there you go. And if not, then go ahead and ask the question, right? Um, like if, if I get, uh, if I've already answered that question three times and you ask me the same question, I probably won't answer it. <laughs> I'll just, you know, if you, if you want to figure it out, then just read it, you know? Um, but anyway, that would be a good way to do it now because I, I do answer a lot of questions online, um, not just on my channel, but also um, you know, accessknowledge.org and on Facebook and, you know, private messaging. Uh, a lot of people have my phone number. They just text me directly. Hey, what do I do here? You know? Um, so I know that uh, a lot of people are, are, are waiting for this. And it, like I said, it's going to strictly be a reference. It's not for entertainment. It's just to, to help people play the 36 game. And you know, when it's time to put out 14, then I'll do the same thing. Right. I uh, just got my rule book finally a week ago for 36 though. Um, nice looking rule books and uh, so I can finally do that. Anyway, um, what else? Um, I just watched uh, a couple of videos this week that, that caught my attention. Lots of good videos out there, but two in particular. Uh, one, the first one was, was G.I. Joe. Um, he did a channel update kind of video and there was lots of interesting stuff in there. But one of the things that that caught my attention was he uh, he said that in an upcoming video, one of the things he was going to do was make a, a top 10 video and it was going to be the top 10 videos of his, right? Um, and it's not by, you know, his, his favorites or your favorites. It was uh, the top 10 videos with views. Like, you know, this one had the most views and this one had the second most. And I, um, I kind of was curious. I wonder what, which one of mine have the most. Because I don't look through my old videos, right? I, I, you know, what am I going to watch one of my old videos for, right? Um, so I went there to look at my videos to see which one has, has the most. And, and uh, half my videos are missing. Yeah, what the hell? Uh, you know, like I just looked there a couple months ago and I, they were there, you know, I was cause, because I was looking for an old video to answer a question. Sometimes it's easier for me just to go and find the link to that video and, and uh, post it, you know, online to whoever has a question, say, you'll find it at 14 minutes of this video, right? Uh, it's a little easier that way than trying to explain it all in four paragraphs or something. Um, but anyway, uh, so I Googled it and, and apparently um, YouTube is archiving videos now. So the video is still there. You just can't find it. It's just not listed under my videos. Um, you could, if, like if you typed it in, uh, then you could find it. But I mean, if you're new to my channel, then you don't know what to type in. You don't know that that video ever existed. But um, a lot of the important videos though, like the strategy series from Axis and Allies from way back then, you know, with each nation had its own strategy video. Uh, those were popular. And uh, Know the Rules uh, videos, those were my favorites that I ever did back then. Um, and uh, and also I had a one-on-one series like um, um, land combat and air, air combat and, you know, uh, naval combat. So there was five of those videos. 
those are in playlists. So if you want to find those videos, if you're looking for them, you just have to go to my channel and then click on playlists. And you will just, if you're looking for that strategy video, then click on the Access Now and Strategy videos. Like then you'll have to scroll through because it'll be one of the oldest playlists, right? Uh, so you'll be able to find those videos there um, in the playlists. And, you know, videos like the one that I'm making right here, like I didn't make a, a playlist of these kind of videos. Like, why would you want to watch this video twice, right? Um, it's just, you know, not something that you probably want to do, right? Um, it's not something that I would do, that's for sure. I don't go back and watch people's videos like this, you know, that they have like, I, I think they're interesting, but you know, I'm not gonna watch it five times, right? <clears throat> anyway, um, so those are, the, there's no playlists of those. So not every video I have is in a playlist, but uh, a lot of the, the bigger ones, a lot of the, the ones that people, that have the most views, you'll find those in playlists. Um, and the other video, actually there was three videos that were put out this morning, or maybe it was last night, and they were from the garrison, my friend Detroit in, in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. He had a, a video where he was on a Zoom call with Gargantua. Now Gargantua is one of the best Axis and Allies players on the planet. Like, he's just, he's really good. Um, and I know him, he's from my province of British Columbia here. He's, uh, he's down in Vancouver and um, he's been to my house and uh, you know had a few beers here um, me and uh, Sire Blood lost to him and his partner in the finals of the Grasshopper Invitational back in 2017 really good guy and, and uh, really really knowledgeable right um, anyway so Detroit interviewed him and uh, there was three videos because Detroit couldn't figure out how to do a long video. Um, and so uh, he had to break it up, but it should just be one video, right? And, um, but that's just gonna be the first video in the series. It was really interesting to watch it because Garganch was an interesting guy and Detroit is, is just an awesome guy and a really great personality. So to listen to those two guys talk about um, Axis and Allies was really, really uh, insightful and interesting. So I encourage you to go watch that. Um, and Detroit, he, he pressed him for, for details, right? We're always trying to poke guys like that, trying to get them to spill the beans, right? And he did, he, 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 uh, he, he learned some of, some of his secrets there. Um, but that's gonna be interesting because I think that what they're both going to be carrying forward with that series. Uh, Gargantua is not somebody, like that's the first time I've seen him on a YouTube video other than in gameplay, right? And um, I think that the, it seemed like to me that, that the two of them were gonna do more interviews. So uh, I guess they've got an interview with Larry Harris, the creator of, um, of uh, Axis and Allies. Uh, they're gonna interview Doug from Historical Board Gaming. And I would assume they're gonna interview guys like Grasshopper and Sireblood and you know a lot of the other guys that you know about. Uh, maybe you've seen their videos or know of them in some way, shape or form, right? So that's gonna be really interesting because uh, uh, these are guys that are really passionate about the game and and uh, um, these are the kind of videos that, that we all like and that, that we look for, right? Is, is to watch these videos with the, with the, where this passion comes through and the insight and everything comes through. Um, that's how we learn how to play the game, how we learn more about the game and uh, it's just gonna be really, really interesting, uh, especially if, if today's videos were any indication. So I'm really excited about that video series and, and I'm really happy that uh, they came up with this concept. I, I can't wait to see the next one. Um, I know I've interviewed Larry before and he's a great guy. Um, and I know Doug really well and he's a great guy. And you know, I know, I know those other guys too. So <laughs> for me, it'd be like catching up, but for you, you know, that's something that you can look forward to and, and uh, maybe hear some insight that, uh, that you haven't heard yet. And, and so check that out on uh, the Garrison Detroit's channel. <sighs> what else? Um, so that's what happened and what's going to happen. Um, anyway, been a really weird year this year. Uh, um, it's affected every single person on the planet. doesn't matter how much money you make, man or woman, what country you live in, what you believe, what you don't believe, um, where you work, whether you work or not, even if you're in school or anything. Um, 
everybody's lives have been changed and, and altered this year. And I feel really bad for um, people uh, that, you know, like people, uh, kids that are graduating high school, you know, this past year or next year, if things aren't going any better yet. Um, because that's a, an event that comes along only once a year. Or maybe it's uh, people who um, were planning to get married, you know, and, and, and um, you know, the, their wedding plans were greatly altered or even scrapped uh, and put off until a later date. Uh, it's affected some people more than others. And obviously it's affected people who, um, who have lost loved ones or people who have, you know, exited the world them, themselves uh, due to... Uh, complications from this pandemic and and uh but you know what um we we're on the hopefully we're on the upside now you know hopefully we, we've uh we've hit the peak of it and um if not now then you know then in the in the next little bit here and uh we'll um enough people will will um, agree to take the vaccine that um, it'll all but wipe the, the virus out and and we can all get back to our regular lives again um, I know this Christmas is going to be different this year you know like I usually go to my sister's house and uh, big party you know and and um, you know anywhere from 12 people on a, on a light year to you know like 30 or 40 people and you know, there's all kinds of stuff. It's out on the farm and we go snowmobiling or maybe have a hockey game out on the pond out back or, or whatever, right? Um, it's always lots of fun. And, and this year we're not doing that. Um, like I think this year it will just be me and my kids and my grandkids. There's just five of us, uh, very small. Um, so I won't be able to get together with the rest of my family. And But you know what? That's uh, that's just uh, something that, that you have to accept and... Um, if you want to make sure that everybody stays safe this year, um, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I, I think my whole family has decided to do. And, um, we'll all live for another day, right? We'll, we'll have, we'll go back to our regular scheduled Christmas next year, uh, with our regular scheduled fun. And, and, uh, five, 10 years from now, we'll look back at this year and, maybe these two years and say, wow, wasn't that something, right? Um, let's hope that never happens again. Um, but may, hopefully not in our lifetimes anyway, you know, <laughs> or our kids' lifetimes. Let's hope it, uh, it was 103 years since the last time it happened. So let's hope it's at least another 103 years this time. But um, regardless of, of what you're going to do this year at Christmas time, uh, just try to make the best of it. Um, just, uh, you know, like, uh, when I talk to my granddaughters now, I, I rarely ever call them on the phone, you know, like I always video calls and we talk like four or five times a week, you know, there's all these options available for us in this modern world to communicate with each other. So, so, um, try that if you, if you can, and, um, you can still connect with your family. Um, but if you are going to get together, then I wish you the best, right? Um, let's hope that, uh, that everything will be fine and that everybody will be okay. And, uh, regardless though, uh, how you try, how you celebrate it this year, the holidays, I wish you a Merry Christmas, um, that you are able to make the best of it and that you're still able to have some good memories from this year, even though it's not going to be the same as last year or the year before. It's going to be a different one, and hopefully it's the, the worst one of our lives. <laughs> but again, just try to make the best of it. So um, I like to usually give away a Christmas present, but I've been off work for so long right now that I can't really afford to mail a present off to you right now. So I'm not going to give one out this year. My apologies. Um, hopefully uh, I'll get back on my feet real quick here and, and uh, get back to my old self and uh and have a a better year next year and and so to everybody out there all of my subscribers and all the people who just watch my videos without subscribing um have yourself a merry christmas and uh, all the best for you next year
Anyway, that's me. So take care, everyone. General Hangernade out.